We've always drank. We've always had sex on the side. We've always done a little thing shady with money. We've always gossiped. My mama gossiped. My great grandmama gossiped. It's just in me. We've always, and God said, drop your anchor. It was a light wind begin blowing from the south. And look at the, the, the thought process of the sailors. The sailors, after getting a warning, thought, we can make it. I mean, it's just getting tipsy on my birthday and holidays. We can make it. Like, this ain't that big of a deal. I can still be saved. And, I mean, mess it, I can mess around with a couple people. Well, it, I mean, it's okay that I talk crazy to my kids. They know I love them. Like, I, I mean, it's just, and, and what happens is we feel like it's not that bad. It's just a little bit compared to them in light of all. And we start making these little drift decisions is what I call it. Because it was a light wind. And they thought they could make it. Write this point down because somebody needs to hear this and it really helped me. Arrogance is the primary ingredient that will make you assume you can take action without God. Arrogance. That's actually what it is. You think you got this and you know more than God. That's why your drift turns into a drown. Many people drowned because it started with a drift and you were arrogant enough to think you could go into that job, to live that marriage, to have that business plan, to work with those people without God. And my question to you is how arrogant are you? What are you doing right now that God is nowhere a part of? Not because he doesn't want to be because you never asked him to be. See, the thing about drifting is it starts with arrogance. I can do this without God. And especially with Christians, we rely on our gift more than our God. See, because the gift that God gives you, some of you have gifts to administrate, and some of you have gifts in music, and some of you have gifts. And so you're like, well, God gave me this gift, and I perfected this gift, and I went to school for this gift. And people see you, and they mix the anointing with the gifting. And God's nowhere to be found, but you can sing your butt off, and you can play your butt off, and you can write and make movies and do all of these different things. And God said, I'm over here because you're doing that in yourself, and you are arrogant enough. To think that you can do that without God? This is the myth of your drift. If you start being arrogant and thinking that God is somehow a, a, a side dish to the main part of your life. Yeah, I'm going to take a career with the side of God. No, 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 no. I want a bomb relationship and just drizzle a little God on it. That is arrogance. It's the arrogance that Saul had. Y'all remember Saul? When, when, when God anointed Saul as king and Samuel the prophet told him, you wait here because we're going to do this ritual and we're going to offer this offering to God by, together. And, 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 and it, would, it, it took some days and Samuel wasn't there yet and he thought that he was going to get defeated. And so in arrogance, Saul stepped up and said, well, I can do this by myself. And he offered the burnt offering by himself. Samuel walks up and said, what have you done? And because you've done this, you out. That's when God called on David in the field. We would not know David if Saul didn't drift. And everybody wants to be David and be marked. But what would have happened if Saul would have stayed anchored? Your replacement is not needed if you stay in place. And the problem is that too many believers get arrogant and think that you can do the business without God, that you can run the church without God, that you can have a marriage and raise kids without God. And God said, now I got to raise up your replacement because you got too arrogant to stay anchored. That's a whole nother thing. Ugh. Too arrogant to be anchored. I'm telling you right now that you have to decide that your accolades don't mean you're anchored. Just because you're anointed doesn't mean you're anchored. Just because somebody famous affirms you doesn't mean you're anchored. 
A blue check doesn't mean you're anchored. Zeros in the bank doesn't mean you're anchored. Your kids getting full ride scholarship doesn't mean you're anchored. You have to decide not to be arrogant and stay anchored. Woo, I feel this thing right now. Because they started assuming, which assuming always leaves you looking like the first three letters of that word. Because they started assuming, it led to wrong actions. I'm on one today. I need to get home right now. I need to get home. Can I keep going, y'all? Can I keep going? Because I'm trying to help somebody not drift. This is the year of the anti-drift. And I got to shoot it to you straight because I wish somebody would have told me like this. Because of your arrogance and assuming that, that, that you could do it without God, it leads to your action. Can I just put another reminder? This is why you pray every day. You don't pray every day as a religious activity or to check some box. You pray every day because you're acknowledging that I need God in every one of my days. I heard it said like this. A day without prayer is a boast again. God. What that means is when you don't pray, you're basically saying, God, sit back. I got this day. Don't worry about it. I got this day. And I'm telling you why Transformation Church has decided and anchored that prayer is our sauce. Y'all don't see it, but on Monday nights before every staff meeting, before everything that we do, we invite God's presence into everything that we do because we are anchored on prayer. And when you become anchored, it's saying, I'm not arrogant. I'm not going to be prideful. I'm not going to be puffed up that this is me and this is the LED screen and it's the water. On. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter about any of that if I'm not anchored to God's word. And what happened is these guys, they weren't anchored. They didn't listen. They didn't heed the word. When the light wind began blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it. So what do you do when you think you can make it on your own? What's the word of the year? Anchor. I said, what's the word of the year? Anchor. What do you do when you're so arrogant that you can think you make it on your own? Look, so they pulled up their anchor. Arrogance leads to dumb actions. And if you think you can do anything in 2021 without God, go on. Pull up your anchor. I feel like an old school person. Go on. You know how like I, my family's from Louisiana. Some of y'all are like, go on. What is that? that this, it's like, just go ahead and do it. Like, 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 go on, go on, go on and unplug from the church. Go on, stop serving. Go on, think that everybody that was accountability in the last season that you trusted, now because they're saying something that goes against what you actually want to do, now you leave them and say they all turned on you and nobody gets you, and now you get a whole new group of friends that looks good on the gram, but it's bad for your character. Go on, go on. Pull up your anchor. And when they pulled up their anchor, look what they did. They sailed close to the shore. Hold on. They wasn't crazy enough to pull up their anchor and go to the deep because they knew it was dangerous out there. But they pulled up their anchor and then they, they, they sailed close to the shore because they wanted to be close to the thing that saved them but not actually obey the instructions that they were supposed to have. They weren't supposed to go. It sounds like many of us that when we don't do what God has asked us to do and we don't drop our anchor, we stay close enough to God, but we don't actually anchor on what he says. And this is the thing that I came to tell you today. Close obedience isn't close enough. Close obedience in the year of anti-drift they thought they were going to be okay. It was a light wind. It's not a big deal. We've seen this before. We've always drank. We've always had sex on the side. We've always done a little thing shady with money. We've always gossiped. My mama gossiped. My great grandmama gossiped. It's just in me. We've always, and God said, drop your anchor. But because they were arrogant and didn't want to do it with God, they pulled their anchor up. But they was going to just stay close enough to safety. To be okay, just in case anything happens. I watch Transformation Church. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I give twice a year just to let God know I'm here. And God's saying, close obedience is not close enough. What has God told you to do that you've been close to doing, but you still haven't fully obeyed? Do you know the time that we live in right now? We are in a storm as a country, as a world, a godless world. And God's telling his church, anchor. 
It looks a lot like 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Look at it. It said, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves. Let's just see if we find ourselves in this whole scripture. Men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. This is the most devastating part, having a form of godliness, but denying God's power. Close, close to obeying, close to God's power, close to his word. But close obedience is not close enough. And the craziest thing about it is when people do this and people live like this and people do it, it says, and from such examples like this, from such lifestyles like this, from such leaders who lead like this, from such churches who open their doors, but they don't have no power, people turn away. That's why we represent that's why God's called us to be the light in the darkness. That's why we got to be in every sphere of influence. That's why we got to be in education. That's why we got to be in entertainment. That's why we got to be in government. That's why. Because they need somebody anchored in that place. And God's calling you. Somebody say, God's calling me. Friends, thanks to you, the message of hope and grace found in Jesus is beaming into millions of homes around the world through TBN. So for your gift of support in any amount this month, we'll send you Dr. Robert Jeffress' new book, Courageous, 10 Strategies for Thriving in a Hostile World. So take a moment to visit tbn.org slash courageous10. Thank you.